Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Soro, and this is my YouTube channel, Data Science Novice. So, if you are new to my YouTube channel, please do like and subscribe. Your efforts are massively appreciated. So, this is the third and the last video on loan default classification problem. In the first two videos, we did analysis and data cleaning. So, if you haven't watched those videos, I would suggest you to go through them as well because you will not be able to understand what is happening here. So in this video, we are going to cover a few things like building three or four models in few lines of code. And also I will talk about one more important aspect of machine learning that is simple is always best. So for example, we have some state of the art algorithm like neural network or convolutional neural network. And they are really good at dealing with non-linear data or you can say complex data because they can find pattern itself. So one might think that these algorithms can do magic in our case as well. But it is not as simple as that. I'll show you that sometimes our simple algorithms are as good as neural network. So in nutshell, everything boils down to data cleaning and all the pre-processing steps we do. And if you don't know any pre-processing steps, I have created a course on that. You can find the link in the i button. So what I have done is, first I have fit a neural network to the data using TensorFlow. And if you don't know anything about TensorFlow or neural network, you can visit my playlist on deep learning with TensorFlow. I have explained everything there. So in this video, we will walk through the code only and I will tell you what is happening. So let's jump to the Jupyter Notebook. So here, first we have to import TensorFlow and all the required modules. So if you don't have the TensorFlow, you will have to do the pip install. In the next block of code, I am defining the model. That is how many layers my model should have and how many neurons each layer should have. So in this model, I started with 78 neurons in the first layer. Then I set the activation function equals to ReLU. Next, I have set dropout layer to be 20%. That means 20% of the neuron will be switched off in each epoch. And this is something we do to prevent overfitting in the model. Next, we have the second layer. And in that layer, we have 39 neurons and everything else is same. Next, we have third and fourth layer and each of them containing 19 neurons. So in a way, they are identical. And finally, we have output layer. So in this case, it's a binary classification problem. We only have one neuron in the last layer. And then next uh, we have activation function set to sigmoid. And you can try a different configuration as you want. There is no restriction on that. So I would suggest you to try different configurations. So when I say different configuration, I mean changing the number of neurons in each layers or changing the number of layers in your model. And then we have different kind of activation function that you can try. Next, we are compiling the model. That is, we are setting the parameters for training. So here the loss will be binary cross entropy because our problem is binary classification. Next, we are setting the optimizer equals to atoms. And I'm not going to talk about all these things because I have already talked about them in detail in my TensorFlow, deep learning with TensorFlow playlist. So I'm not going to go in that area as of now. Finally, we are using early stopping to stop the model when it starts to overfit. So this is the benefit we have with neural networks that we can stop the training as the models start to overfit. And there are certain parameters that we have to pass. Finally, we are training the model on training data as well as validating the model with the test data. Then there are other things like batch size, number of epochs, etc, etc. So once the model is trained, we can have the history of the model by calling this function and we can save it in a data frame for further investigation. So here I did the same thing and plotted the model history. And from the graph, we can see that as the model keeps on training, the training loss and the validation loss keeps on decreasing. And that's the whole idea. If we keep training the model, the model will make less error. Next, we check the performance of the model by getting the classification report. And here we see that the model is giving us 89% accuracy. Now don't assume that the model is doing well. And the reason is, if you can remember from the last video, that is, it's highly imbalanced data set, around 80 to 20 ratio. So even a human can get 80% accuracy on this data if he keeps saying paid or did not default. And to deal with this kind of imbalanced data set problem, we have different kind of techniques like upsampling, downsampling, or SMOT, which is nothing just creating synthetic data in order to overcome class imbalance. And we are not going to cover it in this video because the motive is something else. But yeah, I will going to create a course on that one also. So don't forget to subscribe my channel. 
So now we have benchmark model that we know we need a model that can perform better than this one or at least similar to this model. And if we are able to find a model, we are going to use that one instead of neural network because we know neural network requires lots of resources to train. So why not take a model that takes less resources and perform similar to that only? Because as I said earlier, simple is always best. So first we are going to create a list of model that we need to train. And in that list, we are going to set the parameter for the model or you can say algorithm. Now, in order to use all the model, first we have to import it from sklearn module. So we are going to use linear SVC that is support vector machine. Then we have logistic regression. Then we are going to use naive based classifier. And lastly, we are going to use random forest classifier. So as of now, I'm going to use four models only, but you can try as many as model if you want. You just have to import it and then you have to pass it in a list. Next, we are going to create a list in which we are going to pass all the algorithms that we want to train. And here I'm not going to explain anything because pretty much everything is straightforward. We are just defining the model. So I'm going to fast forward in time. Next, we are going to create a function that will do few things for us. Like first, it will instantiate the model. Second, it will fit the model. Third, it will make the prediction. And lastly, it will create a classification report. So we are going to name it as a model CLF and it takes single parameter that is the model itself. Next we put CLF equals to X. Here we are instantiating the model. Once we have the model, the next thing we have to do is to fit the model. So CLF dot fit and then we have to pass the data. So once we have the trained model, next thing we have to do is to make a prediction on the test data. So here we are creating a new variable predict and in that we are going to pass the prediction or you can say save the prediction. So you have to just call the predict function and in that we have to pass the test data. So once we have the prediction, we need to know how accurate our model is. So in that case, we are going to print classification report and that's all we have to do for this function. Now, if you have been following my video, you know what I'm going to do next. So next I'm going to run a for loop on the list of models we have and inside the loop, we call the function that we have created and pass the variable and this will allow us to train multiple models. So let's do that. Okay, so we are getting an error. Okay, let me see what I'm doing here. Okay, okay, it's not model. It's going to be model CLF because that's the function name. So let me correct it. Now let's run this cell and this will take some time since the data set is large and we are running multiple models. So I'm going to skip this part and show you the result so that we can compare it with the neural network result. So here we can see that out of all the models available, we are getting similar accuracy in the fourth model that is random classifier, sorry, random forest classifier, which is a great thing. Now we know that random forest can work as good as neural network in this case. So most of the time we avoid the complex model in tabular data because they are like a black ball. You know what is happening, but under the hood, what actually it does, you can't say anything about it. And it is really hard to explain a model from a business point of view. Even in my company, we use logistic regression most of the time because it is easy to trade and you can actually explain the model. And there are some business related things that logistic regression allow us to do. So that's all from my side on this video. I hope you got the idea what we are trying to do here. And if you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Till then, bye, stay safe and wear a mask.